In this video, we're going to incorporate natural language processing into the demand forecasting models that we've been looking at in this series of videos. Let's real quick take a look at the time series demand forecasting data set that we're going to use. This data set is hosted on Kaggle and I created it. It's essentially a simulation that looks at forecasting the demand of six restaurants in a beachfront setting. You've got time series data, natural language processing data, and computer vision data. Let's have a look at all three. And this data set, I have a link to it in the description. This data set exhibits seasonality and trend both. So that's something that you have to be aware of as you're trying to forecast into the future. Seasonality is the fact that you're seeing this go up and down based on the month of the year. And if you zoom in further, you'll see that there's even seasonality by the week. Trend refers to that this whole thing is increasing gradually over time, especially if you look at the peaks. You have a bunch of different items that you are trying to forecast the sales for. And you've got historic data as it goes into the future. There you see a bit better, kind of by week, you can see this product was clearly discontinued there, uh, but you, you need to forecast when a product discontinues, what, what is that going to do to the rest? Is it going to cause other ones to fill in the gap or will that demand simply go away? The files are here. The primary one that you're going to deal with is this one called sales train, which is your sales over time. You can see the dates here, the item, which are those items that we were just looking at, the price that it was sold for, and how many items it was sold for that day. These are all of the days, and the items are unique to each restaurant. You don't have multiple restaurants selling the same item. They're very similar across some of the restaurants. The actual items are here. You have some information about them. They're in tabular form. Each item is sold by a particular store or restaurant, store ID, and the restaurants are here. For natural language processing, I recommend doing something, maybe not with the restaurant names, because there's not that many of them, but the item names, you could certainly use natural language processing to maybe extract some further information. There's also computer vision, which are these pictures that were taken at the street where the five restaurants are at, showing the number of people there. So you could use something like Yellow or other deep learning packages, computer vision packages, to count how many people. Both are on the beach and on the street, because they, those tell you different things. I did run a Kaggle competition with this data set and some of my students at WashU. You can see the root mean square errors that these teams were able to accomplish and some of their code is in the code tab. I'll also put a link to the Kaggle competition that I ran, Kaggle Community Competition. We're going to make use of a notebook that I have up here on Kaggle where the data set resides. I have a link to this in the description of the video, so you can certainly take a look at that. You can run it right here in Kaggle, or you can download it and run it elsewhere. We begin by loading the, the data, just like before. And to incorporate natural language processing into this data, we're going to look at the item names. Here you can see something's called like chocolate cake, or breaded fish with vegetables meal. This was all created by a simulator. And maybe milk cake and chocolate cake might be similar, but if they're categorical distinct items like they are here, the program won't be able to learn any similarities as it's trying to predict future sales of, of both of these. So we're gonna use word embeddings and convert these items into their embeddings, which will be numeric vectors that will let the neural network learn something about each of the items. The embeddings that we're going to make use of are the glove embeddings. And the link to download this has changed a bit over time. I think companies host it and then they get a million downloads and a big multi-thousand dollar bill from Amazon or their cloud provider. But it does now look like Stanford is hosting this, and I've had pretty good luck with this link. This is a fairly large file. You'll download it and unzip it. This is just a completely pre-trained model so that you don't have to build your own embeddings. And then to actually use it, we need a Python library. That's just the data file. 
we'll use Gensum. And we're going to make use of the 300 length vector that uh, is, is one of the ones that we that we downloaded. The typical example they'll often give you is king minus male equals monarch, monarch plus female equals queen. So this shows you just some of the ways that it, it can pull out and look at words that are very close to, to each other. The shape of each of these is a 300 length vector. And what we're going to do now is go through all of those items that we saw, and we're going to get their, their vector. So we're going to process all of the titles, and we're going to loop through them. Some of these words that were in the items list don't exist in the glove embeddings. Uh, veggie does not. So we expand that to vegetable. Smoothie, that doesn't exist, so I just made it malt. This is just dartboard uh, looking at words that are fairly similar. But you would get an error if it found a word that was not in there. So if you were running this off in a production system, you'd probably want to just drop out words that you that come in that you don't know. So we loop across all the words. We convert them to lowercase. We're not letting capital letters have any significance. And if the word is in, in the model, then we're going to get the vector and make a copy of it. And we're going to uh, keep adding to that vector so that uh, that's how we deal with multiple words. So we're essentially taking the average, as you see we do the division for the average down there. If there's three words, we take the vector, vector, vector of all of those, sum them, and then divide it by the length, getting an average vector of those words. There's a variety of ways that you can combine multiple words together with embeddings. That's the one that I chose for this one. And then we loop through the entire table of all of these words, titles, names of products that we have. We look them up one by one, and we create a lookup table that is going to give us the vector encoding for each of those titles. And there are 100 different items that we have, so that's how many should be in the lookup table. We've seen this function before. This is used to convert the... So if you have a bunch of sales just going off over time, you need to break those into sequences. We're gonna use a 30 number window, and that's a sliding window that goes through as you move into the future, always taking the last 30 items. The lag is how far into the future you want to predict. So if you're trying to predict, say, 30 days into the future using the last 30 days, there'll be a gap or a lag in between there of 30 days. And dropping not a numbers will drop any values that, um, that, that didn't exist when you generated the data. Ideally, you wouldn't have any of them, but uh, depending on how you're doing your pre-processing, you may have some that have not a number. We are going to put the day of the week and the day of the year into the data set that is going to go into the neural network. This attempts to resolve some of the seasonality for the neural network because this way it knows what day of the week because the sales are very seasonal by day of week. The weekends, they tend to sell more and day of the year becomes important because during the summer they tend to sell more that gives the neural network additional engineered features that it can learn off of. Then we convert the data into the sequences. You can see now we have the sequences where we have the, the last trailing 30 days. Those are what we will train it on. This part right here is where we're inserting those vectors for, the, for all of the titles. So the, the neural network also has those to differentiate the items because we're trying to predict the sales for all 100 of those items. And this way, the neural network can, can make some recommendations based on the individual items. This is the structure of the neural network that we're creating for the natural language processing version of this. You can see that there's two distinct branches of the neural network. So this is a little more complicated of just than a straight through feed forward neural network, although it is feed forward. The input layer here, we have 300, we have a 300 vector 
This branch right here is handling the natural language processing. This branch going through the convolution neural networks, this is handling the, the 30 number sequence that we're predicting back into the past. So these all go together and then they come together in a concatenation layer, which combines that into one, one just concatenated vector that will then go on to the dense layer. And you can see here, this is where I build it up. A and B are those two sides of it. And then we build the concatenation layer. Then we're able to train it just like normal. We're using an early stop on this. It trains through with this additional information. And then we evaluate it getting right, right, right at eight root mean square error with this additional natural language processing data built into it. And thank you for watching the video. This is the latest on the demand forecasting series that, that I put together that was based on a class, that, a two day course that I delivered earlier this year. If you find this interesting, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. Thank you.